Samaritan's very interesting because it's a take on uh, when you are born with supernatural gifts and then you realize things aren't turning out as well as you thought and perhaps even tragedy occurs. This superhero says, I've had enough of trying to save society. I can't even save myself. And he goes into hiding for 25 years. And he's just a trash man living this kind of like lonely existence, but okay. And then this young kid comes along and said, there's something about this old man here that it's not ringing true. There's more to it. And he continues to get involved until finally I'm exposed. And I go back and do my hero stuff. I have a knack for that particular kind of mythology, action films, but also has heart and in relation to other people. So they can say, oh, that's like my father and son situation and so on. So I thought there was many, many layers to this. He's like growing a beard and he works, trash can, he collects old objects and fixes them. And that's symbolic of him trying to maybe fix himself. And then you have this kid who is kind of a spark plug for the whole movie, the genesis of why the film actually is happening is through his eyes. Samaritan and Nemesis are brothers and they're quite different. It's almost a, like a biblical Cain and Abel. They're different. And they start to grow apart until finally they become adversarial. One is trying to keep the city a wonderful place to live safe, and the other is trying to destroy it and turn it into a corrupt situation, kind of like Batman and Joker. It's your classical adversarial situation, except they're brothers. And then an event happens one night that has some pretty tragic results, and one of the brothers disappears. Well, it's superhero and anti-hero, but they're, these people are vulnerable. They can die. So they're not impervious. Like, I mean, it's hard for me to, you know, how do you root for Superman? I like it and all that, but let's face it, he's pretty bulletproof. Right? These people aren't, and they rely upon extraordinary strength and temperament to do amazing things. But they still have one foot in reality that... Yeah, this is, you know, they're not, ex they don't walk around in uniforms. They're like everyday people that you don't know are there. Kind of like if your neighbor was a vampire, you go, really? Okay. <laughs> he looks like us. <laughs> According to the way I approach filmmaking and when I've been successful at it is the audience has to identify with the crisis and say, oh, I've been through that or I can relate to that. And it's called pure and simple empathy. If they're not empathetic to the situation, then emotionally they're not involved. If they're sitting back and they're watching Transformers, it's like, oh, I'm not going to be emotionally involved, but I'm going to enjoy the visual banquet. But my heart's not beating fast, that kind of a thing. So if you can get the emotionality, and that's what this has all the way through. You have a child with no father, and then you have me, isolated, getting older, you know, so there's a, a combination of very realistic situations coming to fruition. I think it's very timely because uh, we're going through some upheaval, and no one's agreeing with anyone, and cities are being fragmented. And that's exactly what happens here. And when people give up on a city, the badness comes in. And so the bad is taking over Granite City. And it's just a classical format about how do you take back what is yours that you built. And I sort of lead the way, but the whole neighborhood now goes, ah, we got to start doing it on our own because after the last, situation, I sort of, we don't know where I go. And now they're sort of left on your own. It's, it's really a, a morality tale, but very, very exciting to watch.
In this one here, um, it, it was more of trying to regain some quickness, some mobility. This had nothing to do with being actually physical. There's no taking off of your shirt and doing this kind of thing. Um, I wanted to be more invisible. In other words, you wouldn't be able to pick him out and say, oh, yeah, look at him. That guy's you know, all yoked up with a big neck. It's pretty obvious. He blends in because that's what he wants to do. He wants to be Joe Smith. I mean, I even chose the best, most simple name I could find, Joe Smith. Like, Joe Schmo was taken, unfortunately. <laughs> but Joe Smith was there. He doesn't relate to the world. He's, he's always been drawn to superheroes, comics, again, mythology. And he just is looking for a male role model. The entire neighborhood is surrounded by bad guys. And he's being bullied and beaten and uh, tortured and harassed the whole time. So he just senses, he goes, this guy, I think he, he sees me as a father figure. You know, this old guy, there's something there that connects with him. And it, it's necessary. He really needs it. And that's what happens as I do become this surrogate father and he becomes the surrogate son which uh it's nice the kid is necessary because there's no real valid reason why i'm so we'll just say uh, uh exiled from life i mean yeah okay you've had some bad blows but stop feeling so sorry for yourself and this kid sort of brings that out of me, which is necessary. So I needed him for growth. Like, I was feeling a pity party. You know, I was. I'm trying to think, why would I do this? Why would I stay in the same city and be a garbage man? That's like, that's sort of a cry for help. Hey, discover me, but in the meantime, I'm not going to help. But otherwise, if you really didn't want to be part of society, you would have left. You know, gone to some other country. So there is a... A lot of little things in there, if you read into it, where every character is necessary to support the other character. Rocky would have never been Rocky without Adrian, and then the brother Paulie, then Mickey. They were the building blocks. Otherwise, I was just a bum, and he knew he was. Nemesis, in his own twisted way, thinks that he's actually a great um, uh, advocate for freedom and, and how the rich have basically held down the poor. So he's trying to twist everything that if you follow his corrupt, weird, violent ways, this would actually be a better city. Kind of reminds me, you know, it's a dictator mentality, and that's what it is. Well, I saw him on Game of Thrones, uh, and he was playing a pirate. I went, I hate this guy. Really dislike him, which means he's doing his job perfectly because he's not like that. He's a true gentleman. He's an artist. He's a very conscientious actor on every level. But he has that ability to make you hate him when necessary. But he also has a... Um, a unique rhythm, and that's hard to duplicate. You know, it's also he has the right voice. When people ask me, like, oh, what's it take to be a good actor? Well, it's there's so many components. Actor is one thing, but to be an out like a star, star, something that's out there, it's not about acting. It has nothing to do with acting. Matter of fact, you can be a bad actor and be a star. It's this thing that you just overall package is like when you look at a piece of art, you go, That's, why can't I take my eyes off that piece of art? It's not, it's not even that good, but it's riveting. That's what he is. He's you just watch him wherever he goes. You don't. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't blend in. <laughs> OK, ever. 
he doesn't blend in. It was, you know, I, I really enjoyed the process because he's, he's a big man with a big heart. He has big ambitions and he has a, 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 an ability to see the big picture. So I had seen a, a couple of films of his previous work. And I thought, wow, this is a really gifted filmmaker who, who loves the process and who gets this material. This is sort of, it's a, it's a smart call for him because this is his wheelhouse sort of, you know what I mean? It's one thing, everyone thinks they can direct everything, you can't. You focus on what you're really good at and you're that kind of director. Whether drama, action, Shakespeare, this, that, you name it, comedy, you can't do everything. Well, I can, but then again, there's, I'm rare. I think this movie is going to sneak up on them. It's it's quite different than a bombastic Marvel film. It's a little more grounded in reality, and I believe they're going to be swept up in the actual characters. I oh, I know that mother. I know this son. I understand Joe a little bit. And before you know it, they're invested in a, in a personal way as opposed to just wanting to see explosions, which they'll get. But they go, oh, this guy really has a dilemma or he has insecurities like me and he's over, trying to overcome or he's guilt. So all the emotions, and that's, that's what I try. When I'm on my game, the more of those things I can relate to and not try to be vain you know, yeah, it's all about me. No, if it's all about them. It's all about the audiences pushing the story forward because they like it.